In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how we can take an object's prototype and actually modify that object and extend it to perform additional functionality that we might be interested in. To perform this demo, I'm actually including two third-party libraries. I'm going to be using jQuery and I'm going to be using the QPromise library. So down here I've set up my two deferred objects. I have an object called first deferred and a second object called second deferred. And basically what I want to do is I want to chain these two promises. So I have first deferred dot promise and then hanging off that promise I have a then statement which is then, then going to execute another function once that first promise is resolved. And that second or this the second deferred promise is going to be returned from this then statement and once that promise gets resolved then the final function here saying both promises resolved will be executed. To actually resolve these I'm just going to use a simple set timeout. I have the set timeout for the first deferred to be resolved after 3000 milliseconds or 3 seconds and for the second deferred I have it set to resolve after 6000 milliseconds or 6 seconds. So if we load this up in our web browser we'll see that after 3 seconds our first promise is resolved then after 6 seconds our second promise was resolved and then in the end both promises were resolved. Now typically when I set up promises I get tired of actually having to wrap these chained promises inside of a function. So sometimes I like to do this and instead of wrapping it in a function I simply want to pass the promise itself into the then function. So if I do that let's take a look at what happens. I'm going to reload my web browser and you're going to notice that the first promise gets resolved after the three seconds as normal but then immediately after that the code for displaying both promises being resolved is executed and then finally after the full six seconds then the second promise is resolved. Something didn't work right and looking at this code for whatever reason the QPromise library is not set up to actually receive a promise as the input to the then function and so it immediately resolves this and then executes this all the while this is actually still waiting to be formally resolved. So to get around this problem what I can do is I can actually extend the QPromise library using JavaScript and specifically the prototype object to actually modify the then function to have it do what I would like it to do. So up here at the top I'm just going to put a few spaces in here and we're going to type in some new code. So the first thing I want to do is actually get a prototype of the QPromise object. Now if you look at the QPromise source code you will notice that the actual promise object itself is actually defined Within the, um, within the actual Q module, so we don't have direct access to it. So to modify it, what I have to do is I actually have to first call this object.getPrototypeOf, and then I actually need to call the Q function. Now the Q function is actually going to return a promise to me, a resolved promise in fact. And what's going to end up happening is by using this getPrototypeOf, I can get access to that to that uh, promise prototype which is actually the actual promise object which is hidden inside the Q module. So now that I have the prototype the next thing I want to do is I actually want to get access to that original then function and I want to save a reference to it. So I'm going to do original then equal promise prototype dot then so this is going to basically give me a reference to the original then function that I still want to call even after I override this the override the current then function and create a new one. So now I'm going to do promise prototype dot then and I'm going to set up a new function. Just like that. And so now what I want to do is I actually want to write an if statement and I actually want to check to see if what I'm passing in is itself a promise which is actually the goal of my change. So I'm actually going to pass in arguments 0 alright 
And so I'm going to say that if this is a promise, then what I really want to do is I just want to return the promise. So I'm going to come in here and type arguments 0. However, if what I pass in is not a promise, then what I want to do is I actually just want to execute the original then function and have it operate the way that it normally did before I made this change. So I do original then dot apply. I'm going to pass in this as my reference so that everything will continue to work within the object. And now I'm going to make use of a jQuery function called make array. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pass in the arguments object into make array. And so now what's going to happen is original then will actually execute within the context of it being a part of the current object with the original argument being passed into it. And so using this functionality, I could actually save this. And now without having to modify any of my code down here, my promises will actually execute as I expect them to. So if I go back to my web browser, I can now click refresh. The first promise is resolved. The second promise is resolved after the full six seconds. And then finally, both promises are resolved. So as you can see, by gaining access to an object's prototype and then, and then saving a reference to the original implementation of a particular function, I can then create a new implementation of that function. And if I so desire, I can then call the original implementation when it's appropriate.